uh, students' work that they have um, labored on as a collaborative uh, project for the doggy and caddy company. Um, we hope that you find that these uh, presentations will be uh, stimulating and creative uh, because um, they put um, um, many hours into creating um, this project. Uh, thank you. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Nicholas Lopez. My name is Shana Silva. My name is Nicholas Lopez. And our group project is the Pooper Snooper. <laughs> and our motto is for poop's sake. So our product is basically an automated vacuum designed to pick up poop. Now this isn't a um, deep product, it's just a, uh, a design uh, that already exists, but for other, uh, uh, just for regular household uses, not for dog use. So our goal is to create it just specifically for dog poop. Um, so our product senses dog waste and it picks it up. It picks it up on carpet, hardwood floor, and tile, as well as outside uh, on the grass and on cement. Our product is harmless to dogs and cats, even though it's specifically designed just for cats. And it is uh, composed of recycled products, so we're trying to go environmentally green for this product. And it is uh, waterproof as well, so if the dog decides to pee on it, messed up or when it's outside if it, if it gets rained on it won't uh, get uh, defected. <coughs> Why do you need one? Well it's simple. Unless your dog can pick up its own crap <laughs> or unless you want to be always uh, picking it up with your hands. Most products you know require you to uh, handle it with your hands. You want uh, to get one. So with this you don't ever have to pick up any uh, dirty waste with your hands. Uh, you won't ever have to smother because pretty much the vacuum will automatically sense it within 15 seconds and automatically go over to it and pick it up. Um, usually when you pick up poop, you know, I don't know if you guys have more than one dog or even one dog, you usually get multiple bags to pick it up. So with this, this, seems, this has one bag in its container and pretty much resolves uh, the need to have to carry on lots of bags. Um, this thing leaves 99% less waste. The way the product works is it uh, vacuums it up and then it sanitizes it with uh, a deodorant that we have in it. And then it steams it up. Now the steamer only works in the carpet and the uh, tile and uh, hardwood floor. For the outside, the only function it does is pick it up because we don't really want to sanitize the tile or uh, I mean the cement or uh, the grass. So, so how do other products compare? Well, these are some of the basic products. Uh, basically, you pick it up uh, with these things, or you can have this shoved up your dog's butt. Um, it seems <laughs> kind of invasive, and uh, it just looks like a really uncomfortable for the dog. It's just like a harness that right around the dog's butt. And uh, this machine over here. It picks it up and it burns it. Um, the, the scooper is like really small, so chances are if you have a big dog, it might not pick up the entire poop, it might be smudged, so things like that. Basically, our product does what five or more other products can do. <coughs> and um, it requires no handling for poop for up to a week. So this thing has a storage compartment where it picks it up and it stores it there and in about a week's time, depending on how, how many dogs you have and how often your dog's poop machine will let you know that it's the bin is full and there's a little bag inside where all you do is eject it and get the bag and throw it in the trash so basically once a week uh, is all you need to do with poop handling. Um, uh, Jesus will talk about the next one. Well, you know, here we got the market environmental model for the, for the United States. We started off with a political strategy, like how we were gonna set it all up and everything. We were talking about that. We were gonna um, collaborate with Petco, PetSmart, and other pet companies that sell the pet products. So we could combine with them and get our product well known and like brand 
brand orientized. And then the, the social culture strategy is like, how are we gonna go to market to the, uh, to the people? Since you know, we're already in 2013. Everybody here is like tech savvy, everybody knows how to do everything basically at this age. And whoever doesn't, I mean, they're still probably living under a rock. The competitive strategy, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use a product that nobody had. So we invented this, the Fupa Snooper. We made this because, you know, there's no one out yet without like, with the same product that picks up actual dog waste and most of the other products is pick up like dirt, hair, or any other little small particles on the floor. For Morocco, we had almost the same thing, almost the same like uh, marketing strategy, but we made, um, we made, since we have like an agreement, I guess, with them, which is a federal trade agreement, we could use that as an advantage to our product to be able to export it over there and make everything, you know, less, less um, illegal with more, with more things to be able to do over there. The competitive strategy is basically the same thing. Morocco is in, is in like, you know, how do I say it? It is in, it isn't that, mod, um, that modern with all the tech stuff. So I doubt that they have a vacuum that actually does this over there either. The social culture is based towards <laughs> men. Men has like the most domination over there, I guess. And they like, they run the house, they, got, they make the rules, they don't wanna buy something, they buy it. And then we're gonna take it over with the market segmentation we have we're marketing towards the middle and upper class because they're the ones that have like most of the money. We can't market a product that costs, you know, one forty nine ninety nine to somebody in the lower class. So they'll be like, oh, what are we gonna do with this? The product strategy is that we have an eco friendly product that's gonna help out the world, make it like ninety nine percent cleaner. You know, you won't have to look down to like look down while you're walking in the yard. Oops, you know, instead of dog poop or whatever. Um, our, our product is very convenient. It's small, it's, by, it's a 12 by 9 product that you know you won't be able to go. Like, oh, I can't fit it here, I can't fit it there, I'll fit it anywhere. You can put it in your closet, you can put it wherever you want. The pricing strategy over there is going to be at 1,071 dirhams, since over there, a dollar here is nine dollars over there. We made a calculation, you know, to sell, be able to sell it over there, so we're gonna have to probably sell it at, to get the, the most profit from the, from the product. The distribution strategy is that we're gonna make the product available for the US. We're gonna make it here as well too. We're gonna produce it here. And from here, we'll ship it to Morocco, depending on the sales. We won't have it stored over there, just for you know company purposes. We just ship it over there from online. And promotion strategy: we're gonna use emails, billboards, advertisements on TV, and the website to be able to advertise it as Facebook users. And after that, you know we'll probably get our strategy like we'll probably get our profits and our revenue pretty high with everybody over there having TVs and most over there. Everyone has billboards. We'll probably keep it up with that. I'm gonna let um, Shannon take over this right here. So my job is to explain to you guys what's going on with some statistics. So I feel like every time, it doesn't matter when you put a new product online, you're gonna have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, which brings us to the SWOT analysis. And this is um, one of the major marketers that use. It's an example of how the SWOT analysis works now. So. I'm going to explain to you guys. All right, so some of our strengths. Our product contains multiple features in this one product. It allows weekly poop handling opposed to daily cleaning up. And it says removes 99 point dog waste. No smudge is left over and it sanitizes the poop area. Some of our weaknesses. Outdoor function does not operate to its full potential. I think that just means that 
when a product is outside, I mean, it doesn't go, it has a sensor, but it has, it only goes up to so much feet, so it can clean outside. But I feel like if you have a home or a, a little apartment or a backyard, it sensors that and it can go up and clean your household, but it's not gonna go like across the street. That's probably, I think, one of the only weaknesses, but, and then I would also say some of our opportunities. It could improve the length of the poop handling by creating a bigger storage system or innovative way to combat the dog poop. So I mean, we don't. We wanted to make this like a household environment vacuum. Like some people don't have a huge house, so this is like a vacuum that will self clean by itself. You don't want to be running into a huge vacuum. So we can only contain, like I said, only lasts up for a week. So it only can contain so much waste in it. So every week you just have to change it. Marketing in other countries with high dog populations is a different another opportunity. Improving the technology and making it more convenient as time goes on, and creating another line for cats because our product only is right now, we're only marketing to it as a, um, to dogs. Um, and threats, not being able to fit all the features into a convenient size auto vacuum. Shipping our products cuts into our cost and revenue. Um, like he said in the beginning, our product is environmentally friendly. So we feel that in order to have an environmentally friendly product, we have to make sure that it is being made environmentally friendly in the factory so it will be made here and not somewhere else that will be clean and safe for the environment. You can't just make a product safe when made in China with an unhealthy, safe environment and then come here and say, this is our healthy product. This is like, a, like saving the earth when it's not being made in a friendly environment. So that's one thing. And our poop scuba dog waste bags, troop, troop, poop trap and ash poopy, those things that I showed before are competitive forces who are some threats. And then I'm gonna talk about some statistics. All right, so for the United States, approximately 11% of Moroc Moroccans are upper class, close to 3.5 million. Approximately 50% are middle class, 15.5 million. Total population is about 31 million. Oh, that's for Mar Morocco, I'll sorry. Go next, go next to okay. So um, some statistics for the United States are um, approximately 15 million, I mean, 15%, uh, which is equal to about 42.6 million Americans live on or below the poverty line. So basically, we're trying to market to everyone else, which is uh, close to 70% or above, you know, middle class to upper class. Um, the poverty line is uh, an annual of at least $23,050, $23, according to the Census Bureau. And, um, for well, the United States, we have a population of over 230 million people. Uh, so these are just some other statistics on dogs in general for the United States, which uh, encourage us to create this product and work specifically with dogs. So in the, in the United States, we have uh, around a little over 78 million dogs that are owned, so that is, that is excluding stray dogs. And out of the 78 million dogs, 28% of owners have at least two dogs. So imagine a lot of dogs pooping at least two to three times a day. <coughs> you multiply that by uh, each dog, that's two to three dogs. Uh, that's a lot of poop a day that you have to pick up. So with our uh, product, pretty much that takes, away the, that takes away the hassle of always having to clean up your dog's poop or, um, or other such. So uh, the reason why we believe this product will be successful is because this is a very high-tech country. Everybody's looking for the new, innovative, convenient tool. So a lot of times you know, when people go to work, not everybody wakes up at 5 in the morning to walk their dog to poop. So some people just feed the dogs and leave their houses. A lot of times the dog poops um, in the house, so you know, that kind of leads to the worrisome of you know, coming home and seeing a whole bunch of dirty messes around the house. Um, and I believe that is it. Thank you. Uh, any questions? It says it's one fifty, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. One forty nine ninety nine. One forty nine ninety nine. Not one fifty. All right. <laughs> Isn't yours a little more expensive than the other comparators? Well. Considering all the high-tech gadgets we have in here, and since this is the only one of its kind, um, 
It is a fair price, you know, most bathrooms that you buy nowadays are a range between $300 to $400. So I think our price is pretty fair. Again, our price is also high because we are also promoting in Morocco. And in Morocco, most of the people, most of the upper class do have dogs, but for security purposes. So most of the people who have nice big houses would have a security dog. They don't want to be taking care of the dog. They want, you know, this automatically does it all for you. You don't really need to feed. It's a security dog. You don't, it's not a home baby dog, friendly dog, so to play with. So we also put it as a high price just because we are promoting it there to higher class people as well. So that's why it's such a large price. Yeah, because I was going to say, you know, both economies <coughs> have different, you yeah. know, so wouldn't it be fair to kind of lower you know, Moroccan price just a little bit. Right. Well, we, we did think you about I mean? that, and as our product is environmentally friendly, it does cost a little more to make, mm -hmm. considering that we have to export it. You know, according to our cost, well, if we were to reduce the price, um, it would, you know, we would make a lot less revenue. Yeah, like again, we thought, like, if someone goes to the store, someone who just has one dog and is a middle class, lower middle class person, they're not literally looking to go buy almost $200 vacuum when, you know, so I feel like this was more towards upper class people that have, you know, large class homes that aren't always always working. So that's just, and again, like he said, our product is environment friendly, big cost in making it, so we gotta make profit somehow. <coughs> yeah. Any more questions? Oh, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you have a lot of great statistics, um, but could you go back to the slide that it talks about the environmental model of the U.S. And you talked about oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, way back, I think, um, this one? Jesus, no, the Jesus. Oh. yeah, um, is this what Jesus was? Yeah. 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 yeah, right. When you say political strategy, and then you bring in these competitive companies, how is that a political strategy? Answer that. Uh, well, and political strategy is one of the. Well, how things. come Jose can't answer it since he say, say presented it? But, um, Jesus, okay. I'll let my partner do it because he was the one that you know, <laughs> researched this part. Yeah, you know, okay. Part point, you know. <coughs> I researched this part. So, uh, part of the political strategy is to get involved with um, uh, people, uh, popular people, kind of to kind of, uh, how do you say it, help you market your product a little better. So if you get involved with a well-recognized uh, company, it's kind of helping you popularize your product. Okay. Um, then the other thing that I want to point out, I, I'm glad that you related your pricing to deer hams. Mm -hmm. um, that was what I wanted to ask. And then the other thing, you talk about you bring in that you're going to market to middle to upper class, but then you bring in this whole statistics about the poverty line. Uh, I, I guess I'm trying to understand. Um, I, I guess I'm trying to understand the people who are in the poverty line. They don't have dogs. <coughs> well, I would just showing the statistics to help you understand how little that market is and how great. Our the market, our target market is. Mm -hmm. That was just for that purpose. Right, because you said, well, we're going to market to everybody else <laughs> right. above that. I so mean, everybody else above that, how many of them have dogs? Um, I mean, you, you gave a statistic. <coughs> we're going to market to everybody above the poverty line, but everybody above the poverty line, how many of them have dogs? Because I guess that's who you try to focus on, right. those who are above the poverty line who has a dog, because if you have a cat or a bird or a fish, that's what your product is.